Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. We're going to talk about posterizing time or implementing a strobing effect in Resolve 15 with the aid of the new Fusion page. Let's start with dragging in our footage. I downloaded it from a uh, website. I'll uh, link to the website below. And as you can see, it's a skateboarding dude jumping over a lovely picnic table. So we'll set the in and out points like so. And once we've done that, we'll go over, over to the edit page and drag in the footage to our timeline. And let's have a look. Yeah, that all looks good. So we're ready to go to the Fusion page. So what we're going to do here is add in a note, control spacebar to bring up the search box and type in time and select time stretcher. So in source time, you can specify the frame you want to see. But we can be smarter than that. We can actually add a so-called expression. Let's do that here. Let's type in floor, open brackets, time divided by seven, close brackets, times seven. So what we're basically doing is telling Fusion to look at the current time indicated by the, uh, or the current frame indicated by the variable time divided by seven, take, uh, round it down and multiply it by seven. So if you have frame 70, Divided by seven, you get 10. Rounded down, still 10. Divide and um, multiply by seven, you get 70. If you get to 71, you still get 70. However, when you get to 77, then you have 77 divided by seven. Rounded down would be 11 times seven is 77. So it jumps from frame 70 to 77. As you see here, it jumps by seven frames at a time. And that's what we call then the posterized time effect. Now, of course, you can change the 7 to whatever you like. The lower the value, the more choppy it will get. For now, however, let's disable this node with Ctrl P. Let's do some more fancy stuff. Let's add a tracker and track the gentleman's cap. Like so, I'll speed it up a tiny bit and I'll track it forward. And then backward as a normal tracker. There we go, that's all done. So um, what we now wanna do is to jazz it a bit up and add some text as you saw at the start. So let's tidy up the flow a tiny bit and let's add a text plus note. Type in something like skate or whatever text you want. We'll change it later on. Change it to the font you want and, oop, and I forgot to display it in viewer one. Let's do that now. So let's head over to the shading tab to work on the text. The first element is just the main one, the main color white. Let's leave that. Let's go to the second one. As you can see here, if we enable that, you see a red outline around the text. Well, we don't want to have that. Let's disable it again. Let's go to the next one. And there we see black shadow. You enable that and there you go. And the fourth one, a blue border. Now that's more what I wanted to go for. Now this is on a per character basis. So let's change that to line. There we go. Uh, I don't really like the color, so let's change that a bit. Well, let's change it a lot, actually. So let's change it to a shade of, let's go for a red. Yeah, there we go. And let's round the corners a bit. Uh, that's looking a lot better. We can extend, or in this case, reduce the vertical uh, shading bit. And, and that is looking good. Now, if we connect it then, to the tracker, it automatically creates a merge node. And if we then pull that into the viewer, you see just the text. Of course, right now when you play it, nothing happens. It stays stationary. But we want that to be connected to the tracker. Now we could do that in a text node, but instead I'll use a separate transform node to keep it all clean. So let's do that. And let's then rename it by hitting F2 and call it something like tracker transform like that. Let's go to the center point, right click, connect to tracker path position. And that basically connects the text or the transform node and via that the text to the tracker. Now, of course, in the example we saw, it was a bit to the right. So let's add another transform. Again, could be done in the same node, but I want to keep it clean. And let's call this node something like offset. Offset, there we go. And then we can basically offset the text by just dragging into the value box of X and Y to the appropriate, so that it gets to the appropriate position, like so. And now when we play it, 
There we go. It's looking good. Now, what I don't really like is if it follows it exactly the same. I want the text to have a bit of a delay, typically. So I add a time stretcher. And then again, I add an expression time minus five. So then basically it has a five frame delay. So when you play it again, you can see there is a bit of a delay. So the text follows it just by a fraction later. So now the tracking is out of the way. Let's uh, grungify, if that's a word, the text. So to do that, we're going to add some fast noise stuff. And let's first add a brightness contrast node, like so. And we're using that in a different way, not to do the brightness and contrast, but let's check the alpha box and let's see what happens when you reduce the gain. Everything disappears. And that's how we're going to use it. If we now add in a mask and we're using a fast noise to act like a mask and pipe it in there. And if we then go back to the brightness contrast node, like so, and we reduce the gain, we see that basically the fast noise is acting like a mask. Now we're going to work on the fast noise. Let's disable lock XY and increase the Y scale and decrease the X scale to get these uh, lines essentially by, you know, it stretches out the fast noise. And um, you can see here the result in the composited image and on the left hand side, just the fast noise. And then we basically uh, need to, to tweak the parameters a bit to get basically what we want to have. And as you can see, I changed the angle and I'm just really tweaking it. And it sometimes can take a fair bit of time, you know, until you get what you want. Sometimes when you just drag it along, all of a sudden you get what you want and then you're done. In any case, we're done here and let's add another fast noise into this and pipe it into the first fast noise and it creates the merge note. I basically want to add a bit of normal or sort of a non-stretched fast noise to it. And basically that will add to the overall grit or grunginess of the image. As you can see here, it sort of creates a certain um, well, gaps in it. And I think that's what grunge is supposed to be doing. And I think that's something I quite like. So we're pretty much done here. But I want to do a bit more. As you may have spotted in the example, we had a uh, bit of sort of white, some white dots uh, on the outside. So to be able to do that, we need to go back into the text tool and go again to the shading tab. It's worth mentioning, by the way, that on the shading tab, you can change the presets completely to your liking. The presets are there just to give you starts. So here I'm changing the appearance to a block as we did before. And then we're going to add another brightness contrast node to do essentially the same thing. Right, brightness contrast, check alpha, completely turn down the gain and add another fast noise. As we're doing here, pipe it in and we see the fast noise acting like a mask. So what we're doing different here is we're actually adding a mask to the fast noise itself and really playing with it and reducing the height. And then we change the fast noise parameters as we did before. Right, and now it will only act within the mask of the fast noise, right? And when we play them with a rectangular mask and invert that, you see that now instead of inside, it will affect the outside of the mask, because essentially the mask is inverted. We add a bit of a soft edge, and now we see basically that the fast noise is just acting on the outside, i.e. the white bits, and that's what we want. And then we're going to, you know, change the parameters a bit until we basically get the effect we want. And maybe this is a bit much. Playing around with the rectangular mask a bit again. And this is probably close to what I want. Move the mask down a bit. And it's looking pretty good. Right, maybe the red was affected a bit too much, but now it's just affecting the white bits. And yeah, that looks good. Let's play through it and uh, let's see what it uh, looks like now. So here we go. We see the uh, text was following a bit later. That slight delay uh, thanks to the time stretcher. 
Uh, yeah, that's all looking good. But of course, right now it's the same text. And now we're going to do something a bit more advanced, but it's a very, very uh, interesting and useful technique. So we're going back to the text node and to the text tab. And in principle, you could animate the text, change it at certain keyframes, right? Change the text there. And it's very powerful. However, I want to do something different. I want to add an expression, which is uh, very useful and flexible. So I'm going over to Notepad to type it in because you don't have an awful lot of space in these uh, boxes. So let's type it in. A colon, my array. That's just a variable name for an array. Uh, curly brackets, open curly brackets. And then we add our different text elements all between inverted commas. Very, uh, and then separated by a comma, like so. And close curly brackets, semicolon, index, equals floor, open brackets, and now it becomes important, we need to take the start point of our clip. In our case, it's uh, frame one to six. So the expression becomes open brackets, and then another open brackets, what time, minus one to six, close brackets, divided by 14, close brackets. The 14 basically means that we want to change the word every 14 frames. Now, as the index starts at one, we need to add the one plus. Then we end with a semicolon and then return my array, open square brackets, index, close square brackets, semicolon, and that's it. Then we copy it over and pop, pop that into our expression field. There you go. So now when we go back and look at our animation. We need to zoom out a bit. And there we see the text updating every 14 frames. So this is a very, very powerful technique and can use it in lots of circumstances. It seems like a bit of work, but once you've got the hang of it, you can use it in all kinds of circumstances. So I definitely recommend doing it. But as said, you can also just animate the style text and set the keyframes manually. Now there's one more thing I wanna do. I wanna rotate the text, right? Give it that sort of uh, additional grungy feel. So I insert another transform tool and call that, rename that to rotate, and I put it in there as the very first transform. So between the brightness control and the other transform. And then I go to the angle and add a modifier with shake. So we're essentially adding a modifier. You double click on the shake on the modifier tab. We reduce the smoothness, i.e. making it more jerky, and we set the minimum and maximum rotation value. So minus 30 in this case to uh, I think 15 or something like that. And it means it will rotate a bit more to the right rather than to the left. And then when you play it now, you see what's happening, right? It's rotating as we go along. Now, this doesn't look very impressive, but we need to remember we had switched off our time stretcher, right? Those, the choppiness or the stop motion feel is gone. When we switch it back on with Ctrl P, if I do it properly and then I pull it into the viewer, then you see the result. A choppy video with crunchy text rotating, rotating around. Uh, now, um, there's one thing, uh, look here, it is disappearing at the end because it's basically running out of words. So we need to go back to our text tool and let me just tidy up a few of the notes here. It doesn't look very pretty. So let's go back to our text tool and just right at the end, after, after the um, last word or the dots, add just one more word and let's call it another. And then it should update and then there, it go, there you go. Um, it prevents it from disappearing because otherwise if you run out of words, it will disappear, nothing will be there. So last thing, uh, we add in a color corrector after the tracker, give it a bit of a, an orangey type feel and maybe we need to reduce the saturation somewhat as well, but let's play with the colors here. Uh, but it's of course to your own liking, let's drop it down a bit and I think let's add about it. And then we're basically done. When we go back to the edit page, um, you will see that it may not play back smoothly. It all depends on your system. What I tend to do is do the render cache and set it to on. Uh, even so, I've noticed, and it could be well be because it's the beta version of uh, Resolve 15, even when the line being completely blue, I'm showing it here, it's still, well, it's choppy, but some, it's meant to be choppy, but you can see there are some dropped frames. 
So for now, I basically go to the deliver tab and just render it out and then re-import it back to, uh, to resolve. Uh, now again, this may well be just for the beta version uh, or you may not have that issue on your system at all. But for now, this is a, at least a workaround. So um, I will show the final result in a moment. But in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, should you have any questions or any comments, please leave them below the video. And in the meantime, enjoy your day. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.